Tuscaloosa to Frenzy. Fire it. Touchdown, Alabama. SEC champions, Alabama. Crimson Tide. We talked about Alabama. Step back three. Money. And the Alabama Crimson Tide will roll into the final four. Roll Tide. Roll Tide and welcome to Tide TV This Week. I'm Roger Hoover, joined by Mary Reagan Bolig and Mary Reagan. It's great to have you back this week co-hosting Tide TV. Roll Tide. Roll Tide, Roger. Glad to be back in the swing of things, especially since we had fall break and the bye week last week. Well, after 10 weeks of play, the first college football playoff rankings were released on Tuesday, and the Crimson Tide received some good news. For the first time ever this year, 12 teams will be selected to compete in the college football playoffs. In their initial rankings, the college football playoff committee had the Crimson Tide in. Alabama ranked number 11 in the committee's first rankings of the year. Tide was paired with six seed Texas in the first round matchup. Final rankings will be revealed just about a month away on Sunday, December 8th. After playing eight games on the season and four in a row, Alabama had their second bye week of the season this past week. The Tide is coming off a dominant 34 to nothing win over the Missouri Tigers back on October 26th. Coach DeBoer and the team have used the past two weeks to really rest up, get healthy, and prepare for 15th ranked LSU, and the team is fully aware of the importance of this game. For us, uh, it's just always going back to really the process and you know the work that needs to be put in, the areas we needed to uh, continue to improve on, and the guys, I, I use intentional, the word intentional a lot, whether it's here, whether it's with our team, you know, we have to be intentional and we got to bring that energy in order to to really continue to improve. And they're doing that and they they want to make something big of this season. And it's supported through the action that you see on the practice field. Um, you see it in just uh, the, the way they're 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 going about their business uh, off the field. Uh, you know, just the details that really, um, you know, continue to hone in on. Um, and it's just a matter of time. Right. As a, as the season goes on, you you become more comfortable with what we're doing, uh, whether it's our scheme or just the routine or, you know, each other. And, um, you know, a lot of our youth is is rising up and continuing to gain more and more confidence uh, mixed in with uh, the veterans uh, that, uh, you know, uh, continue to bring great leadership. So um, I like where we're at, you know, unfortunately, like you said, we have less wiggle room. Um, and, you know, our backs are to the wall. And so, you know, we're going to fight, uh, you know, each and every day, bite, scratch and claw um, like you've never seen. And uh, that uh, continues on this week. And we have a game time and network for next week's matchup at Saban Field at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Alabama will take on Mercer for the next to last home game. Kickoff is scheduled for 1 p.m. and will be streamed exclusively live on ESPN Plus and SEC Network Plus. So go ahead and make sure you have everything ready so you can watch the Tide on those streaming networks. As we said, after the weekend off, Crimson Tide returned to the practice field as our Christopher England was there. He got to catch up with one of the leaders on the offensive side of the ball in this week's first off the field. I'm Chris Freeland with Tide TV, joined by quarterback Jalen Milrow, fresh off the practice field. Now you had the week off last week, this week preparing for LSU. What's the vibe out there? I think the best thing is coming off the bye week. You know, everyone's fresh um, and ready to go. Um, I think the biggest thing that we all have is just the mindset we're ready to practice. And that's the best thing that I see from the guys on the practice field today was everyone was ready to practice and have the right mindset. Um, and, and ready to attack because, you know, we have a definitely a, a tough opponent um, against a tough crowd and going on the road is all about being a great communicator. Um, also, just being on the same page with whatever we do. And so that's the, the, the mindset that we're all trying to have, you know, today with attacking today, seizing every opportunity that we have and being the best prepared team when it comes to Saturday. And so it starts with today. And so I'm definitely um, excited for what's ahead for our group. But, you know, the biggest thing, we have to prepare the right way, have the right mindset. And I think um, our coach is doing a really good job with pushing us and just getting on the same page so that we can um, be the best us moving forward. In your last game against Missouri, a big 34 to nothing shutout on homecoming. Just seemed like everything kind of came together. The defense came together, the offense came together. You had more rushing yards in that game than you had since week one. Just kind of talk about that rushing attack. Do you feel like everything's kind of starting to work now? What was the difference in that game? I think the, the, the biggest thing is just massing the game plan. 
and do what's called, you know, for my job. You know, we talk about doing your job. You know, whatever it is, whether it's handing the ball off, whether it's um, distributing the ball to our playmakers, running the football, doing my job, whenever, you know, whatever the game plan asks for um, when it comes to the quarterback position. Um, but it's all about doing your best and then also just mastering whatever it is. And so um, when it comes to um, going against that team, and they were definitely a great defense, had a lot of guys that uh, flew, flew to the ball, um, that they were trying to be disruptive and then also just trusting in our blocks, trusting in our offensive line um, and also our receivers were just, you know, they're blocking assignments, also passing assignments because everything complements each other, the pass game, the run game. And so for us at the core position, it's all about doing our job at the position. Jalen, you traveled to LSU this weekend. You haven't played there before, but you were there two years ago when, when Alabama went there and played. Just kind of talk about that environment, what that's going to be like, and just going against that LSU defense. I think no matter what, um, when we play on the road, it's going to be a definitely a great atmosphere. And for us, number one, we have to be great communicators. We all have to be on the same place, the same page, and also acknowledge when it comes to our assignment. You know, just mastering our assignment and knowing what we have on each and every play, and um, eliminate bad plays. And that's going to be so important when to be on the on the road and all just being on the same page. But to speak about their defense, I think the defensive line um, is the best aspect of their, of their defense. You know, they have a lot of edge rushers that are disruptive um, and always try to get the offense off schedule when it comes to backing them up and also just causing disruption to um, the passing game and the run game. Then they also have um, linebackers that are very disciplined, uh, flow to the ball well, uh, have an eye for, eye for the ball. Um, then lengthy secondary that um, attacks the ball and acknowledges their assignment and um, has good range. So we have definitely have a test going up this, this weekend, and we're excited for the challenge. Well, thank you, Jalen. Good luck this weekend and, and Roll Tide, and look forward to talking to you again. Appreciate you. Roll Tide. Roll Tide for Chris Franklin, uh, Jalen Milrow. That's it for first off the field from the Hank Chris Indoor Practice Facility. Tide TV This Week is presented by the University of Alabama, where legends are made. Ford, visit your local Ford dealer, proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide. It is just as loud here at Coleman Coliseum tonight. I thought the whole crowd was unbelievable. I wouldn't miss anything you could possibly be at this season because it's going to be a special season. Alabama fans at Coleman Coliseum have been so good all year long. What a scene at Coleman Coliseum. Let's throw Coleman every time they give you a chance to throw Coleman. What the electric crowd here. Let's just support this team because it's not that often that you get to put a team of this caliber together. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week. The 11th ranked Crimson Tide football team travels to Baton Rouge this weekend to take on the 15th ranked LSU Tigers. For a preview of that matchup in Red Stick, our Christopher England joins us once again. Alabama and LSU will meet for the 89th time when the two face off in Tiger Stadium on Saturday night. The Crimson Tide on a sizable advantage in the series history with 59 wins to 27 losses. But what's even more impressive is the Tide's record in Baton Rouge. While it's regarded as one of the toughest places to play in the country, since 1970, Alabama owns a 21-5 record against LSU in Tiger Stadium. Alabama won the last matchup in Bryant-Denny last season. LSU took a 28-21 lead early in the third quarter, but Alabama finished the game with 21 unanswered points as the Tide rolled to a 42-28 win. LSU enters the matchup 6-2 and 3-1 in the SEC. The Tigers lost their opening game of the season to USC. With a score tied at 20, the Trojans scored with eight seconds left to get the win, 27-20. LSU then won six straight, including wins over South Carolina, UCLA, Ole Miss, and Arkansas. In their last contest against Texas A&M, LSU led the Aggies 17-7 in the third quarter, but the Aggies outscored the Tigers 31-6 the rest of the way to hand LSU their second loss of the season, 38-23. Both Alabama and LSU are coming off bye weeks. The last time the Crimson Tide came off a bye week, Alabama had an incredible game plan as everything seemed to go right as they led number one Georgia 28 to nothing early in the second quarter. Leading the LSU program is Brian Kelly. He is 26 and nine as head coach at LSU, but is one and three all time against the Crimson Tide. 
Offensively, LSU has leaned on the passing game this season and has had trouble running the ball. LSU is dead last in the SEC in rushing yards with 922, but the Tigers are second in the conference and sixth nationally in passing yards with 2,662. While the offensive line has had trouble opening holes for the running game, they've been the best in the SEC in pass block, ranking first in the SEC, allowing just four sacks on the season, but they will be without starting left guard Garrett Dillinger, who will be out for the game. Leading that passing attack is redshirt junior Garrett Nussmeyer. Nussmeyer is 7-2 in his nine career starts at LSU and has thrown for 300 yards or more six times this year and seven out of his nine starts. He ranks second in the SEC, averaging 330 yards passing per game and ranks second in the conference and eighth in the nation with 20 touchdown passes. But he's also thrown the second most interceptions in the SEC this season with nine. There is one connection to Alabama for the LSU quarterback. He spent some time living in Tuscaloosa as his dad, Doug Nussmeyer, was the offensive coordinator for the Crimson Tide in the 2012 and 2013 seasons. LSU is loaded at the wide receiver position. Kyron Lacey and Aaron Anderson are both in the top five in the SEC in receiving yards per game. Lacey and Tyler Mason are also in the top 10 in the SEC in receptions while Lacey is second in the conference with six receiving touchdowns. Overall, LSU is seventh in the SEC, averaging over 32 points per game, but the Tigers are near the bottom of the conference in scoring defense, ranking 13th, allowing over 22 points per game. The Tigers don't rank in the top 10 in the SEC in pass or rush defense, and rank 13th in total defense, giving up over 360 yards per game. A couple of stats that could have an impact in the game. LSU is dead last in the SEC in punting and punt returns. The Tigers average just 36 yards per punt and just four yards per punt return. Also, Alabama is tied for first in the SEC in turnover margin at plus seven, while LSU is ninth at plus two. For Alabama and LSU to keep their playoff hopes alive, this is a have to win it game. This will also be one of the biggest games of the week as Coach Saban and ESPN's College Game Day will be live in Baton Rouge. The game is also the ABC primetime game of the week. The broadcast is scheduled to start at 6.30 with a 6.49 kickoff. Stay with us. We'll have more Tide TV this week coming up next. Tide TV This Week is presented by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide, the University of Alabama, where legends are made. In every moment, greatness awaits for the bold, the visionary, and those ready to take their shot. Here, we don't chase success. We define it. The University of Alabama, where legends are made. Welcome back to Tide TV this week. The basketball season for the Alabama men's and women's basketball teams are officially underway as they both opened the season with a doubleheader here at Coleman Coliseum this past Monday night. Fresh off the first ever Final Four appearance in school history, Nate Oates and the second-ranked Crimson Tide opened with their first ever matchup against the University of North Carolina at Asheville. Alabama opened the contest with a 9-0 run with this help of this shot from beyond the arc from Mark Sears. Up 33-20, Bama used a 13-0 run cap by consecutive dunks by Clifford Amori to give Alabama the 26-point lead, 46-20. Ten different players scored for the Crimson Tide in the first half as a Tide as Alabama led the break to 50-29. Alabama's domination continued all throughout the second half as a 17-5 run finished off with a three from Mo Diabate. That put Alabama up by 34, 81-47. Then a Latrell Reitzel Jr. three-pointer, only five minutes to play, put the Crimson Tide over the century mark at 100-54. Alabama ended the final seven minutes of action on a 21-2 run. Crimson Tide with seven scoring in double figures, led by Mark Sears. He had a game-high 20 as the Tide routed the Bulldogs in their season opener, one 110 to 54. We've got some young young guys that we need to get uh, 
you know, some experience. I thought LeBaron looked great at nine assists, almost at a double double. He needed one more assist. Uh, Aiden Sherrell won the hard hat. You know, he had nine rebounds and limited minutes. So, uh, you know, Darion Reed had some big time plays too. You know, he had nine and six, and thought he, he started kind of getting more comfortable. He hit that three and went made his free throws there. So, I. Uh, Really happy with the effort from everybody, but you know, obviously the games are going to get a little tougher here moving forward. The 24th ranked Alabama women's basketball team started off the doubleheader on Monday night as they hosted New Orleans. Just like the men, the women started off red hot with an 11-2 run. Sarah Ashley Barker led all scores in that opening period with eight points as the tide led 25-13 after one. Aliyah Nye opened the second period, knocking down this shot from beyond the arc as Aliyah Nye would lead all first half scores with a dominant 17 points. Crimson Tide led at the half 58-27. Alabama continued a dominant performance all throughout the second half, outscoring the Privateers 57-26. Aliyah Nye knocked down seven threes and had a game-high 25 points, while Sarah Ashley Barker had 23 as Alabama rolled to the 62-point win, 115-53. I just thought our kids came to play tonight. We had four and double figures. We got quality minutes from our bench in double digit. The experience, the opportunity, um, the way we won tonight, I thought was really important. And um, we just continue to work every day to get better. So I think those two things are important. We need people to come out and support this team. The 115 point total for the Crimson Tide, the most in a single game since 1995, is a huge night for the Tide as they both opened the season surpassing the century mark. The Alabama cross country picked up a couple of SEC championships and we'll have that and more coming up right here on Tide TV this week. It is just as loud here at Coleman Coliseum tonight. I thought the whole crowd was unbelievable. I wouldn't miss anything you could possibly be at this season because it's going to be a special season. Alabama fans at Coleman Coliseum have been so good all year long. What a scene at Coleman Coliseum. Let's throw Coleman every time they give you a chance to throw Coleman. What a electric crowd here. Let's just support this team because it's not that often that you get to put a team of this caliber together. Welcome back. I'm Roger Hoover alongside Mary Reagan Bolig, and this is Tide TV This Week. And Mary Reagan, the Alabama soccer team has moved on to postseason play as West Hart's squad competed in the SEC tournament this week in Pensacola. 12 seeded Alabama took on 5th seed Vanderbilt in the first round on Sunday. Nadia Ramadan put the first point on the scoreboard as she sent this shot in the lower left corner of the game to give Alabama the 1 0 lead less than 10 minutes in. Ten minutes later, the Tide would strike again. This time, Z Labovich scored her first goal of the season on this kick to give the Crimson Tide the 2-0 advantage. Score would stay at 2-0 Alabama until the 76th minute. Vanderbilt's Ella Eggleston cut the Tide's lead to just one, but Alabama held strong from there as the Tide advanced to the second round with the 2-1 win. Alabama then faced four seed South Carolina in round two on Tuesday night. Unfortunately, the Gamecocks were just too strong. South Carolina scored two goals in the first half and two more in the second to take a 4-0 lead. Alabama would score one goal late in the 85th minute. Nadia Ramadan netted the Tide's lone goal, but that would be all as the Crimson Tide season came to an end there in the second round of the SEC tournament with the 4-1 loss. Definitely a tough loss for a senior class that had competed in the NCAA tournament each of the past three years. Alabama ke competed for another SEC championship this past week at the cross SEC Cross Country Championships. And for the second time in three years and the fourth time in program history, the Crimson Tide women's cross country team claimed the SEC championship. Doris Limnole claimed the women's 6K title. Limnole's time of 18.23 shattered the previous course record. Brenda Tuway's fourth place finish made Alabama the only school to have two finishes in the top five. On the men's side, the Crimson Tide placed three in the top six to secure a second place finish led by Victor Kiprop, who finished second overall. Dismas Lakira finished third, while Dennis Caputo came in sixth. It is the third consecutive year the Crimson Tide men have finished in the top two. Yeah, obviously super excited for the women. 
did an excellent job of executing the race plan. They, uh, Coach Nick had them well prepared and, and uh, went out and ran their races. Um, obviously, there were some interesting race tactics out there. I thought, uh, you know, the Florida girls were really trying to run hard and break us open. And we kept our composure and, and did a good job. Um, I think ultimately, um, you know, the way that we ran was probably the way that we could have been most successful. So I think they did a great job. And the Tide received several All-SEC honors. Five were selected All-SEC on the men's side, including Victor Kiprop on the All-SEC first team, along with Dismas Lokira and Dennis Caprudo on the All-Freshman first team. And four were selected on the women's side. Doris Lenole was selected first team All-SEC, while Brenda Toule made first team All-Freshman. The Alabama volleyball team had a couple of matches this past weekend. The Tide lost a 1-3 decision to Texas A&M this past Friday. Then on Sunday, Alabama dropped another 1-3 decision to LSU on Sunday. Rashinda Reed's squad will be back in action this week on Sunday as Alabama travels to Gainesville to take on the 24th ranked Florida Gators. Make sure you stay with us. We'll have our plays and players of the week coming up next right here on Tide TV This Week. Roll Tide Roll, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Cunningham again, shotgun and she's fouled. There she goes and there's Parker. Timmons there, set her team up possibly the dagger for Alabama. Right to the rim, got it. Kicks, nine, right corner, three. She hits it. Nye steals the inbounds. Left side to Timmons, layup good. It's a two-point game. Takes it a flush in and head and run. Two nil ahead. Parker and beats the buzzer. Aliyah Nye. She's got 25. Seven three pointers by Aliyah Nye tonight. Harris. Lester. About the flush from Jaron Stevenson. Alley oop! And Victor Kiprop, listen, that resume is pretty good. Back to back champ and then runner up. Go for the Southeastern Conference is going to be first across the line. She's just going to destroy the course record. Amazing run by Lemon Golay. Alabama for the second time in three years is the champ. And those were our ATI Plays of the Week. Now let's take a look at our Players of the Week, as always, brought to you by Legacy of Hope. Doris Lamnole captured the SEC Women's Cross Country individual title as she led the Crimson Tide to the Women's Team Championship. Lamnole was also named the U.S. Track and Field Women's National Athlete of the Week. And Victor Kiprop took home second place honors of the SEC Championships as he helped guide the men's team to a second place team finish overall. So with that, congratulations to all of our Players of the Week, again brought to you by Legacy of Hope. Very deserving honors from some great performances at the SEC Championships, Roger. Yes, it was, Mary Reagan, and we look forward to seeing what this team will do coming up at the NCAA Championships, but that's all for this week. We hope to see you back here next week for a recap of that big matchup in Baton Rouge and much more. We'll see you next week, everyone. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. This has been a presentation from Learfield.